I haven't seen Saltburn, um, but but I have been told that it has similar DNA to the talented Mr. Ripley. Okay. Parentheses, 1999. Um, so I should see it, I guess. Apparently, that's what I've been told. Are they doing like a talented Mr. Ripley television show? I feel like I saw or- this. On the Mr. Ripley television show, and I saw uh, this whispered in the wind somewhere, and I went, oh, I'm, like, and I, well, I'm, "I'm not." And I saw the this. cast, and I was like, "Ooh, I like this cast," and I've forgotten who it is now, but I, I oh. liked it when I saw it. I think I'm going to not remind myself so that Duh. when it comes yeah, out, let, and like, then you can go, "Is it Dominic West?" Again? And I'll go, "I don't know. <laughs> it's not Dominic West. It's Clive Owen." <laughs> They're doing uh, so. There's there's some there's some 1999 TV in the making, uh, TV adjacent with that, and then also they're doing the sequel series, like a mini series to Election, based on the, the uh, uh, Reese Witherspoon, Matthew Broderick, correct? Chase Tracy Flick. So uh, a Tracy uh, Flick flick. <laughs> yes. So th- there was a sequel to the to called Tracy Flick can't win or can't lose i can't remember which one it is uh and, and now that's HBO a spinoff from a, parker lewis or no it's it is yes it's a direct sequel to parker lewis can't lose because okay, he couldn't mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well here we are so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let's dive right in to we I have, are here i have notes you got i got some notes I, you um, know what I look i don't I, you know i'm we not can, la- we lazy can play, we can play from memory it's you know i'm not lazy first. but i was out of town and was just like this oh. is this is our first rodeo. Uh, welcome to 1999, the podcast special edition that we're calling 99 at 25. Or that's what I'm calling it in my head. 99 at 25. 25 I liked 99. it. I saw the logo changed. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. I'm John Brooks. I'm Jen Tisdale. And we decided that to celebrate the 25th anniversary of our beloved end of the 90s. Yeah. We're going to. Well, we're gonna, heartbreaking end of the best decade, but yes. We're going to become a, basically a weekly podcast for a while because Ooh. the way it's going to pan out, if we're going to do this, uh, we're going to do a special episode every couple weeks where we check in halfway through mm-hmm. each month and at the end of each month to sort of remind you where we were back in. Yeah. Ye olden days. Or if you weren't born yet, which some of you probably weren't. <laughs> Those people aren't. They're not listening. I'm going to call. I'm going to refer are. to these as our quarter life crises or because it's yeah. 25 or our quarter yeah. life updates or mm-hmm. my so-called quarter life <laughs> crisis. Yep. I don't know. One of those. What is what, Jen, what's your what's your memory? Because 99 if from a pop culture perspective, got off to a little bit of a slow start for 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 a year that became so iconic in popular culture. Um, it was it was a slow first couple of weeks, and we'll talk more about why. Some 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 definitely big yeah. atomic bombs went off as as it went on. But um, do you remember like when this year started? How you were feeling? Okay, so I, I hate to uh, I hate to beat a dead horse and I yeah. or do, or do anything really to a dead yeah. horse if I had my if I had my way no dead horses uh we're pretty that's a pretty strong stance we've taken on this podcast but um yes we're opposed to animal cruelty January I have a terrible memory so whenever anyone asks me anything I I, I, I panic because I'm, I'm like I, I guess know. vibes I'm asking you about your vibes well hold on I remember this vividly because this is when I moved to LA and when I was with right. the, the bloodhound gang mm-hmm and very 90s of you both things yeah so Mm -hmm. i was i had showed up in la i had like i said sort of i'm air quoting ran away from home because as someone once said to me can you run away from home at 19 and i was like yes you can and i did it (laughs) you know when you're 19 you're just legally no you're just leaving you're just leaving yeah yeah don't put up a missing poster that adult just went somewhere else but um so, and I just showed up on his doorstep with a five suitcases. I remember packing and being like, I'm probably going to need all my shoes. And uh, got and on you a were plane. Like, you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. Titsel, t- let's, you know, let's move let's in together. break up like they do on the Discovery Channel. Mm-hmm. Because we immediately did, and thank God. And I <laughs> spent the first three months living and working at a at the Hollywood International Youth Hostel on Hollywood Boulevard, which is next to the El Capitan, and it still exists to this day. And I went there in January of 2020. They did a nice refresh. 
Okay. Still smells the same. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I worked there for three hours a day at the front desk in exchange for room and board until I got a different job, which was actually at the top of El Cap, which I believe is where Jimmy Kimmel records. Oh, see, this is okay. where he does his show, maybe. Uh, it's across the street from Man's Chinese Theater. And, uh, yeah, I was at what I called the hostel hostel. <laughs> Yeah, you know, doing really ridiculous things. I think I've told my person the story. And hello, I know you're listening. Uh, maybe I didn't tell you the story, but I, below the hostel, hostel was a tattoo shop. And I used to wander down there and I started uh, chatting it up with everyone who worked there. And one day we were just talking about piercings and I was like, yeah, I've always wanted to get my nipple piercings. And the, they're like, we'll do it. We'll do it for free. Now John, You're in the right place. You came but, to the right city for but that. John, do you think... Yeah. I think I'm not a dummy, but do you think it occurred to me that two strange men might be willing to pierce my nipples for free for any sort of other reason other than like the the kindness didn't didn't occur to me? I went, you guys are so nice. You're the nicest. I, I would so, assume it's for the artistry, but I, I guess. I'm yeah, wrong. it was. Yeah, there was there was art. It was, <laughs> I was the art. No. So that's what oh, I was doing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Years mm. later, I was like, you know what? Uh, and again, just want to say hello again to my person. I'm so sorry. I'm no longer th- th- that kind of idiot. I'm a different kind now, but that kind is, she's gone. Yes. So that's what I was doing in the early. Yeah. So, but because I lived in LA and didn't own a television and owned one VHS copy of Wayne's World that I watched every day for six months, I missed a lot of pop culture in the like five to six years I was in California. I just wasn't. <laughs> I was so cool. I didn't have a television. I mean, I couldn't afford anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel like I was kind of in a hole for a little bit there. Yeah. Not a cable, a regular hole. Yep. Yep. How about you? I was in college. So a lot of pop culture just came at me. Uh, Actually, I I moved to Ithaca, New York in January. (gasps) of 1999 i uh i transferred so i i uh i don't know if it's really funny because i teach high school that i'm i was an absolutely awful high school student and like barely graduated from high school <laughs> a lot that was a, that's so many people yeah i know definitely is especially definitely is. from our our yeah. time nobody cared yes. about anything we no, were they were true. still doing something called Except social nerds. studies yeah and we didn't study any it was not about any <laughs> sort of social anything as far as i could tell no so, yeah no we were very much like uh, the very last of the like yeah here, here's four subjects good luck generation I, I will say like i am i am grateful actually that i kind of like didn't get into college because i would have been very bad at college if i'd gone to college right after high school i was like definitely not ready i was not into it like so i i i lived in uh, i went to seattle washington for uh a little while and you went to stuff. study. You were like, I need to study grunge. I need to go where the grunge. I had to study grunge. Grunge was. Um, grunge was over. I, like, I, this I said was. Like, was. I this said was, was after Seattle was cool. Like Seattle wasn't cool anymore in the late 1990s. That's that's how much life was lived in the 1990s. Um, yeah, I was there for a while and I decided to enroll in some community college classes and I did really well. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. I can like study things I like. <laughs> I know. Nobody cool. really framed college in that way. Yes. If, had they, I would have been like, well, let's, I yeah. mean, because I went in and out many times. I went to yeah. college in California because after you lived there for a year, community college was free. I don't yeah. think they do that anymore. Maybe mm-hmm, they do. I hope mm-hmm. they do. So that was fantastic. It was just, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. But um, um, yeah, no. I so I, I I got I really got into college and then uh, like like into it as a as a thing to do with your time. And um, so I transferred to a real college in '99. And so I started as a mid year transfer in January of 1999 at Ithaca College. And so I I got I got as a college kid got like pop cultured in my face. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of the stuff that I kind of forgotten a bit about uh, in doing a little research for today's episode where we covered January the 1st through January the 15th uh, was like, oh, right. I remember this. I remember this all happening. Um, I, d- I do remember some of the things. Yeah, I'm sure you do. So we're going to go. I just want to I want to deal first of all with like to, to since we're a movie podcast, mm-hmm. just sort of overview of what was going on at the Megaplex at the time yeah and i gotta tell you for a year that was like arguably the greatest movie year of all time 
not a great start. Bad start. <laughs> it was a bad start. As Bridget so, Jones said, very bad start. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we got a few like kind of random obscure foreign films, some like indie films that were sitting on the shelf for a long time. There's a really interesting movie that came out in on January. I don't know if it's interesting. It's an interesting title called The Sticky Fingers of Time that came out on January the 8th. Kind of want to see that. Not going to lie to you. Um, January 6th was the US release of the Swedish film Private Confessions written by Ingmar Bergman which I've never seen and so oh, I was just listening to a podcast cool. about his ex-wife ah uh-huh, Liv uh-huh. Uh, was it Oldman Liv, Liv Oldman, Oldman directed this mm-hmm. movie and Ingmar well, Bergman well there it is wrote okay. it and uh, it stars Max von Sydow and also uh, Pernilla August, who would go Wait. on to play Anakin Skywalker's mom. Well, I do like Max Wars. von Sydow. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I had not been on my radar that uh, I'd like to see at some I point. Guess, I guess we also have to do uh, 1999, the interna- international. <laughs> the international <laughs> International. Year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. So, like, when we did, uh, like, a year and a bit ago, I think, we did um, Run, Lola, Run, and there was some controversy as to whether or not that's 99. And I was like, look, it came out in the U.S. in 99, and it's a very, like, 99 movie. So it counts, and I'm making an executive decision that it counts. Um, a couple of times in my life, people have said that I look like that Fran- actor. Franca Patente? Franca Patente. And that's, I'll I can t- see it. I'll, I'll take that. It. I'll take it straight I can see to it. the... To the bank. <laughs> you could cosplay? To the, to the German bank. You could cosplay? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then there's a bunch of weird stuff. And then so we all know, if you're, if you're familiar with how movies work, that January is notoriously famous for the January release dump, which is when yeah. studios are like, I don't think this is going to work. And they're like, well, we'll stick it in January yeah. <laughs> and see what happens. There's the so, frenetic Oscar dump followed by the yes. holidays, and then there's the, the wide release Oscar post holiday January mm-hmm. dump. There's the movies that come out for Oscar bait in like mm-hmm. three theaters on December thirtieth, and yep. then <laughs> <laughs> they go wide uh, in the in the next month or whatever. So it's not till January fifteenth that we get anything notable, um, and those movies are uh, Neil Jordan's film In Dreams, a film that I actually like a lot. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to later. I'm a big Neil Jordan fan, um, you know, interview with the vampire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Listen, you don't have to. I know. I know. I know you love it. You, um, you don't have to. I Just like to... over the weekend, I wore my drink from me and live forever. Shirt, <laughs> so don't mind if I do, Anne Rice. Don't mind if I do. Uh, the Forgotten Romance at First Sight starring uh, Val Kilmer and Mira Sorvino. Oh, about Not forgotten a... by me. I've seen I... that movie again recently. <laughs> awesome. All right, cool. Well, uh, <laughs> we have our one at First Sight fan in the world right here. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that I've seen it. I remember it existing. I but... mean, it could never ever rival The Saint. And I'm not no, even kidding. No, I fucking love The Saint. That's a legitimately incredible me? motion picture. Yeah, oh, no, it I... definitely is. I love The Saint. It's So it in terms rules. of Val Kilmer's breath of work, you know, Listen, obviously, obviously Mad Morgan's top 10, top five. Elizabeth Shue just being in anything in the 90s I mean, and I am on board. Yes, you are. You know, don't but have okay. to tell me twice. Uh, we won't. Love that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Virus, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, a movie that is reviled by a number of people. That feels like the... Uh, is it... What kind of virus is it? Is it the first hint of Y2K or is it a virus virus? No, it is like... I think it's like a space virus. I think it's basically like a, the Andromeda strain. I've never okay. seen it. We'll, we'll see. Okay. Um, we're going to do a sci-fi I, I, series at some point. I do so. not know. I am very shocked by how... Um, uh, normally, if I've at least heard of a motion picture, these... Nothing. I got nothing. Well, the oh, last rec- one, the last one in this list is the uh, a person we spoke at great length about last episode, Ali Larger. This uh, is Varsity Blues came That's out right. on January the fifteenth. Guess guess whose life I don't want. Uh, James Vanderbeek. That'll be yours. <laughs> <laughs> How many takes do you think it took him to squeeze out? I don't want your life. I don't want- <laughs> and honestly, that motion know. picture was like I think that every single human being who watched that movie could only focus on the fact that for reasons unknown or known, perhaps once we dig into it at some point, 
He was yeah. a brunette. That for me, I remember watching, I couldn't take my yeah. eyes off of yeah. this famously blonde yeah. Young yeah. actor, and I was like, Not I don't. Is this kind of like we we we've got to take him seriously in this football movie? I don't know, mm. but I remember thinking, this is insane. What is going on? I I do think that movie had it come like if memes existed at the mm. time, that movie would have been memed as fuck. Like that oh, movie, Allie Larder's, you know, very lovely body, yeah, would have been everywhere, all yep. over the place. It kind of was already somehow. I don't know how the internet was very difficult at the time, and yet oh. people were like, when it comes to stuff like that, uh, to quote Jeff Goldblum, some they uh, find a way. They, I, life finds a way. Life finds a way. Look, if uh, Jason Biggs and Co. could perform uh, sexual assault with the internet in American Pie that year, then yep. all bets are off. That's why we invented it. Al Gore. That's it. He's when Speak- he, saw, he saw the future, and that was what would it, that's what it was. Speaking of Al Gore, oh. January the seventh. Segue. Yeah. Clinton impeachment trial begins. Yes. That's it's crazy to think that it took that long to happen. Holy 19, shit, it's that almost two thousand th- th- it was almost two thousand. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. That it's, that's when it began. As I was telling John before we started, or maybe that conversation will be part of this recording, in which case we'll see. I, I don't know, I'm repeating myself, but I recently <laughs> realized that I hadn't finished the third season of Ryan Murphy's American Crime Story, which is about Clinton's impeachment and all the other bits and bobs that went along with it with uh, Beanie Feldstein playing Monica Lewinsky. And as we figured out, Clive Owen playing Bill Clinton. Not Dominic West. Not Dominic West. He's everybody else. Um, yeah. He's other powerful <laughs> men. Every other role is played by he's Dominic West. He's other powerful men who love to cheat on their wives. Interesting. It's an interesting okay. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, That's right. Around the same time as well. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, they were probably hanging out on some plane somewhere. We won't say which one, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So that that you know something something sexual relations something something dress something something stain something yeah. something redemption arc for Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. Um, if you weren't there, this was the most annoying time in American history. If you if you weren't at the trial. <laughs> <laughs> or you just weren't a lot. You weren't like alive okay. and I'm an like, adult and paying attention to the news. Yes, Holy but you know shit. what? It seems it's hard to convince because given all that's happened since a, some, a certain other president was elected and, and like circuses became the norm, I bet it would be hard to convince someone that that was crazy because it is quite tame in comparison. You're like, oh, yeah, he yeah. said what? That's not a big deal. Like, look at literally everything one particular ex-president tweeted or said on an almost daily basis. So as I'm thinking about it, if I put my 2024 glasses on, now it just seems so pretty banal. <laughs> pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty goofy. I mean, the only, I mean, Monica Lewinsky was a victim, of course. Yeah. And over and over again. Over and over. Like, yeah, yeah. so many times. Yep. So For so many reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, that now seems rather like, uh, you know, the junior varsity blues squad. <laughs> I do want your life. When did that start? So the whole. When, I, I, when did all of this begin? Like 97, right? It was like. Well, if like I'm to believe the, the Ryan Murphy timeline. <laughs> if I'm to believe the Ryan Murphy timeline. Yeah. And he's all over the place. He's jumping around. So it's hard for me to figure out like what was starting what. But like we, I just got to the p- the part where they meet for the first time, which was in like 97, 98. Yeah, I, I'm pretty, yeah, yes. I think and it was course, 97. With the great yeah. Sarah Paulson as the late, not great. Linda Tripp. Linda Tripp. She's still alive? She died. Did she really? I think so. I know Ken Starr died. Yeah. Fuck them all. Who cares? I hope they all die. I think, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that sh- series began with the suicide of uh, the uh, so the whatever the counsel, the lawyer. I just watched it. God, my brain is garbage, John. It's garbage. I know. Vincent I know. Fox, something Fox. I yes. T- oh, sure. Yep. <sighs> so Linda that's... Tripp died in 2020. How about mm-hmm. that? Fuck her. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. indeed. Not not She's a nice honest. gal. We don't have to feel nope. sad about that. We don't have to nope. want someone to die, but we don't have to feel sad when the bad ones do. I hope she and Ken Starr are together doing terrible things in the afterlife they, somewhere to other people. 
Yep. They, or terrible. Uh, no, no. The terrible things are being done to them. They don't get to continue <laughs> on with their... <laughs> if they're doing terrible like, things to like Hitler in hell, then I that's fine. I, six of one, half a dozen. I so guess. yeah, so yeah. January... You heard so it here s- first. Linda Tripp and Ken Starr, basically Hitler. <laughs> yep. No, don't Google. Same thing. This, Equivalent. This check, yep. It checks out. So yeah, so that was <laughs> that. That sort of kicked off 1999. What an incredible way to yes. begin the, the political year. Are you doing everything in order? Because I had, I had start, John did most of the work for this one, I'll be honest. I was on a little weekend. I'm, I'm kind of, I did the movies and then I went back in order for the first major event, which is January the 7th. Because there we were can, a couple we of like around boring want. things that apparently this is this, yeah. it was, I can't remember the exact date. I apologize. Uh, kick me off the podcast for being not organized. The Euro was introduced. This was the first time we got the mm. Euro. I don't know why I'm, I'm so excited. I'm no like, shit. that's pretty that's pretty crazy, guys. Have you heard of this? The Euro? Heard of this? Big. Um, if you guys don't get it. Um, <laughs> you seen this? You heard about this? Have you heard about the, you guys heard about this thing? The Euro? Yeah, the Euro about, was introduced. Well, heard about this? Heard about yeah. this? You guys heard about this? Uh, so yeah, the Euro <laughs> was introduced sometime in the beginning of January 1999. I'm incredible with that. January the 1st. 1999. How okay, about that? they wow. they were like, "How should we kick off the new year? <laughs> How about new money? Yeah, new currency, new new, new nouveau year, money, new yeah. money, nouveau riche." Yeah. And uh, Britain decided mm-hmm. was like, "Yeah, fuck it, I like pounds. We're going to be Listen. in the EU, but but we don't we don't like the euro." And then they were like, "We're not going to be in the EU anymore." So. That's they're the not story great of at not they're not great at moving forward and start trying new. Be things. careful! That's this is my not... home. This is my home nation. You guys yeah, aren't. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely not telling you anything you don't know. Um, they're not great. <laughs> I hate like all countries, so you know, don't you can't offend me. But uh, equal opportunity. Uh, yeah, no, they're they're not they're not great at um, getting along with other people and being on a. <laughs> And Equal now they and now they've just field. they've made it even worse. So good job. Yeah, I like the euro. Yeah. I, I having 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 bummed around Europe in my twenties, mm-hmm. I appreciate the euro because it makes things Here's easier. Here's John bragging about his travels. I'm not bad bragging about shit. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that as a poor person mm-hmm. who spent a lot of time in hostels, I like not having to change my money to different things. Not that it would matter anyway, because I haven't had like a currency of any kind forever. I just use my card, my credit card. And then like, whenever, whatever it costs in your country is fine with me. So yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, uh, that was, that was something that people were like, is this going to work? Can you have a car- currency for many countries? And I, I mean, I, I sort of pictured Europe as like, just like each country is a different state. And I'm like, well, we have one whole money for all our little states. Exactly. Exactly. We, right. We got our little monies. Except you got to get special Alabama money, but no one ever goes there. So they don't know that. I don't know. I don't know. So you were also saying that, that Governor of the Body Ventura was, was. Yes. Jesse Ventura was sworn in as governor on January 4th, I want to say 1999. Also. On that day, Iron Eyes Cody died. Now, I might not know who that is had I not just listened to a couple of uh, my favorite sweet Southern boys on a podcast who might be guests soon. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, a, on another podcast. And they just talked yeah. about this guy. Yeah. A lot of people of a certain age, even though this was before our time, but a lot of us will remember as this man was in so many movies, so yeah. many movies as a famous Native American actor. He was married to a Native American woman. They did. He did a lot for the Native American community. He was very clear about wanting Native American actors trying to make that happen. But people of a certain age will also remember him as the famous crying Native American man. Yes. And he like littering. The, they like PSA. Don't about, litter. Don't litter. Well, that's Crying. how nobody litters anymore. Because and they, I guess it's, is it indigenous people? I feel like I'm saying Native American. That's not correct. I think indigenous is the thing now. Yeah. Sorry. I'm so sorry, everybody. So indigenous person. And yeah. Then they, of course, like many actors, like I, I think a year or two before his death, the Washington Times, I believe it was the Washington Times. Maybe I got, I got, no, no, no. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. Not the Washington <laughs> Times. We're talking about the Washington Times separately earlier. The Times Picune, because he was from okay, Louisiana. Picune, yeah. So sorry, yep. everybody. This is, um, this, is Picune. this is allowed to be like a kind of a chaotic episode because it's the first one. So mm-hmm. how, how about that? The Times Picune. Uh, was just like, this guy is Italian. His parents are from Italy. 
And he just went, that's not true. And then died two years later. But he's but you an know indigenous what? Italian. But the indigenous people were like, this guy did so much for us. Like it, more yeah. than like more than anyone could have thought possible at that time. So, you know, for them, I, when in doubt, err on the side of the people, what's the what's their reaction? And they were like, yeah, I believe there was not, not very little, if any, like we're not no one denounced him. They were just like, yeah, but he did so much. And he and he Woods died now, January 4th, together, 1999. Pollution. That's correct. Again. That's correct. And then Jesse Ventura took over and carried on his legacy. Jesse the body. Mm-hmm. Ventura. Like I so Jesse Ventura is really interesting because he is obviously like a deranged conspiracy theorist, and I have a problem with that for a bunch of reasons. But like uh was also, I guess, a pretty good governor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like does he said but, he believes uh, some bullshit too. I, and like I don't but know. But you know what? Very... When did that like you know, when did the brain worm set in? Is is yeah. he like many people the last four years? No, I guess technically, no, or was it soon? He's been earlier brain wormed. He's no. been a conspiracy theorist for a long fucking time. But he wasn't saying nonsense, I mean in nineteen ninety nine, where would he have he said was, it? But was but he was, but 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 he but yes, yes, but he's he didn't govern with nonsense. Like Well and, see, and, that's what you do. You you know, party in the front, business in the back or whatever. Like keep them it. as offspring famously you said. You govern and keep, then you get your own like A and E show or whatever the fuck it was separated. about how how the Kennedy assassination was done by aliens or something. Could have been. Uh yeah. Could have hey, we don't Listen, know. We don't know. Who knows? We don't know. We don't know. Uh, I want to say one historical event on January 7th. A shout out to my person again. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. this is, should I just text him? I don't know why. While Bill Clinton's <laughs> being impeached, something else happens in the well, same day? he's a big basketball fan. So sure I guess not. on January 7th, 1999, the NBA yeah. Board of Governors ratified a six-year collective bargaining agreement between the League of National Basketball Players Association. Guys, Woo! they did it. <laughs> they did it. Guys. They did it. <laughs> That's why... Your life is better and capitalism works now. They did it. That collective bargaining agreement. Uh, yeah. Also, this was around the same time. I think it was January the 11th or 12th that uh, Den- uh, Michael Jordan retired again. Yes. Twice? Second. He's second, his second second. Second, second. second time. People, you retire once. Yeah. You retire one time. That's it. Take it from. Uh, well, That's actually. Retiring- fucking means just one time piece of shite tom brady actually proved us all a little bit wrong yeah when he was like i'm coming back different team and we're also gonna go to the super bowl what a (laughs) dick but you you don't get to retire twice like that's it you retire one time you don't come out of retirement just the sports boys yeah you can say you're taking a break you can just be like you're fucking rich just say you're taking a break like if i'm a if i'm michael jordan and i know that if I am like one day being like, I want to play basketball again. Yes. No one's going to say no. Just be like, I'm done for now. I'm going to go you, do something else. Again, you ha- again. you If you're Michael Space Jordan. Jam too. If you're, yes. If you're Michael Jordan, I mean, obviously everyone's like, be a commentator. And I know because I know no, he's, that's not him. He's not. Uh, no. Team owner. That's what yeah. you do. Yeah, that's what he you do. That's what he did, right? Didn't he yeah. buy the Wizards or something? Yes, he was a partial owner, I believe, of the Wizards for a minute, maybe. I mean, he certainly played with us. And I, Were we the Bullets at the time? I don't know. Nah. It doesn't matter. I do think it's hilarious. Or the Hornets? That, I don't know. Something. He, oh, I think something. The Hor- he did something. I do think it's funny that the we're, Washington we're Bullets NBA changed history. their name because of violence. <laughs> Meanwhile, they kept the Redskins for just decades. And we're like, that seems fine. Also, they changed their name to like a KKK thing. <laughs> No, don't 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 let the don't let the KKK take away. I'm sorry. That's when fine. I hear Washington and then the word wizard, I'm like, well, KKK, <laughs> like right away. I don't we think like the, ooh, we Dumbledore. We weren't the Grand Wizard. No, we the wizard. We still are. I just went to anyway, a game. Bad name. Change that name. Okay, Change I know you have yeah. more things, but I have a really fun one that I actually really remember being emotionally affected by this. Nice. Let's do it. On January 11th, John Stewart took over for Craig Kilburn as host. Oh of yeah, the Daily yeah. Show. So let's, and, let's, and, let's 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 pa- let's pause that for a second. Yeah. I have that on my list too. But you let's do. Pause. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm let's, sorry. let's let's go backwards in time a couple. Like because 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 January the 10th, 11th, and 12th, big three days. Okay. Uh, for this the is the culture. big three. <laughs> this is the big three. All right, January the 10th. 
The Sopranos debuts Mm -hmm. on HBO, changing television forever by creating the idea of the like sweary, violent prestige drama. (laughs) Yeah. And I want to say I have one tiny story. Yeah. A a friend of mine worked uh, post-production. I don't know. I don't think it was the entire time. It was definitely as the show was ending and they you to, they used to tell us about how difficult it was fixing the sound over poor James Gandolfini's deeply labored breathing because yeah. you know not only yeah. was he a heavier guy he was also you know given that nose a little extra work I think yes. than yes. than is the norm and she and they were just like oh, I she they were just like it would take it was very like they really had to do a lot of work to like get that out of the show his breathing yeah yeah. I, ca- I like to tell sad stories. Exactly. That's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, they don't call me Jen the wet blanket for nothing. Okay. We talked about this a little bit when we had Dahlia Balcazar on our show uh, ooh, a long time ago now at this point. But she she uh, in her in her podcast, uh, 1999 Forever, she talked about The Sopranos in an episode quite a bit. And um yeah, I, so I, I always, I, I went back, I rewatched or like, so I, I watched some of it when it when it aired, right? So I had a friend in college who was like my HBO friend who, you know, was the guy whose like parents paid for his HBO package in college. So we'd all get in like, we all go to his room and watch The Sopranos. Um, and then like after college, I kind of fell off because I couldn't afford, because I was poor, couldn't afford HBO. Uh, I'd watched a bunch of the last season, but I hadn't really seen the whole thing like beginning to end. So a couple summers ago when I was supposedly working on my master's thesis, uh, I decided to watch The the Sopranos um, in in order. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really interesting because like you can really kind of see the genesis of the modern sort of prestige drama happening as it's like because a lot of those early episodes like look like like late 80s early 90s like cbs like a, they're like a soap opera it they really like, do like they, they just like don't look great <laughs> they don't look no, cinematic they they're not like it's a very it's a very sort of television sort of filming style and you can kind of see as the as the series progresses it kind of emerge into the more sort of like you know artistic and cinematic kind of drama that you expect from hbo today um but it's it's also just one of the greatest fucking television dramas. Yeah, I also watched it a couple some a couple not summers ago, a couple of years yeah. ago, all the way through for the first time. And I did it yeah. when the weird prequel movie was announced and I said, "Well, yeah. Let me finally watch this thing so I can like I wanted to join that online discourse, John, you know I had to, had to mm-hmm, get into mm-hmm, it." Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh and you know, I liked it just like everybody else did. That weird prequel movie was bad. The I haven't son, seen the prequel his movie. His son was should I great. Not watch it? Yeah, it was not good. I like uh, Corey Stoll. Uh, and then I, I, like, I actually I today Polo. today while watch while going through <laughs> Facebook memories, I'm I'm 100 mm-hmm. years old. Yeah. I saw <laughs> going back I, through my MySpace memories. You know, just checking out the diary. <laughs> I saw that I had tweeted something about the creator of the of uh, the Sopranos finally saying, "Yeah, t- he died at the end." Everybody. And oh said, no, no, he definitely did. Yes, for sure. That's yes, obvious. But, well, no, everyone debated about it forever until well, well they're dumb. They're okay, but well, people were still Easy. debating, John. Yeah. And so and not yeah. until this yeah. creator came and said, Look, he's dead. And then what I'm like, what's everybody <laughs> talk? What are we gonna talk about at parties, you idiot? <laughs> yeah. Great. Great. I uh, so in it I am H O. Um mm-hmm. the two best so like doing the series finale. It's hard, especially when it's not a sitcom and you can't do the whole thing of just like the character looking yeah. at the living room the last time and like putting the light out. You know, that's that's Cl- how you do closing it. Closing the door to cheers. Yeah, one last look at the living room and then, oh, mm-hmm. uh, no, uh, with real shows, <laughs> it's, hard, <laughs> it's harder to stick that landing. My two favorite finales, I think, of all time are you haven't seen Angel are you, yet. You you're going to say you Six know. Feet Under? No, I had, no, not Six Feet I haven't watched Six Feet Under, but mm-hmm. um, Angel. Phenomenal ending and that everybody hated, and I was like, "This is exactly how you should end the show." Look, I, I was, I am, I was, and am such a Buffy. Fan. I know, I know, we both, and are. I never liked Angel the character. It's, 
I like David Boreanaz. I think he did a great job. But what a vampiric fuck boy he was. You got to watch that show, though. Okay. It's really good. It's really good. I, okay. Especially after season two. It just I, like. <laughs> after I burned through season three of American Crime it's, Story? It's question mark? Great. Uh, but the other great series finale is The Sopranos. I like it, It's f- f- perfect. Like, absolutely fucking perfect. Yes. And, and, and like earlier in the season, Tony's like death. You know, someone's like, it's like just the lights go out, just like it used it happens and you never see it coming. And that's how you know you're dead. And like, oh, right. Because that's what happened to him at the end, because it's like just all of a sudden fade to black. Right. The guy comes out of the bathroom and clearly shoots him in the head. And like, you know, that that's that's, and keeps on walking. Did you know that the Sopranos original title was Family Man? That's an awful title. Well, it kind of rules because. <laughs> well, yes, I know it's it's a pun. There's all because he's so many. There's so many families that he it's, is. The, he's a fan because it's two of. worlds, right? It's like yes. he's a family man, yes. but the family, and then the family. Yeah, and but also, he's a family man. Yeah. Do you know why they changed it to the Sopranos? Because that Nick Cage movie. <laughs> No, yeah, what was it that? was the Nick Cage movie. That's no, that's not. No, later in the month, and we'll talk about this in our next episode. Another show with a very similar title also debuted. Uh, family Guy. So they were like, they were like, well, that'll be confusing. So the Family we'll Guy. The Family Guy. So yeah, that's, but also that's very similar premises. <laughs> very similar premises. Had you have think. a fat man who. That's it. Has a family. You have a talking dog. This that's the son. You thought oh, I was going to say Brian. Sopranos is one of my favorite characters, though. I mean, mm-hmm. it really. Right. That's how you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Paulie. Yeah. The talking dog. Tony. I, um, okay. But yeah. So that the Family Guy show, which happens in the end of January, we'll talk about that next episode. Uh, forced the name change to the Sopranos. Which is fine, I guess. Like I, I, but like Family Man is exactly what that show should be called, and it makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah, but that sounds very sitcom. It's so weird and, now, and though. Like I know. Family I know. ties, family man. You know, we can. You're like side eyeing the alternate universe people, being like, "You like the name of that show that you like? Okay, that's fine. We mm-hmm. we call it The Sopranos, but call it what you want." Uh, so the same day in overseas in my native the UK. Uh, Fat Boy Slim's Praise You hits number one in the UK charts. I so I was thinking about this and I'm like, what is the song that is the it's like the 1999 song? That's the, like that is it. That's got to be it. Like that is the song that to me is like playing in the background everywhere I. It fucking was go. in so many films too. I bet if if you were to Just look up how everywhere. many movies that showed up in every it's... dorm room, every fucking Target. It's still a good song. It cycles through it's my YouTube music app and I never skip it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's really Lynn. good. It was one of the first MP3s I downloaded to my Winamp on my compact oh my God, Presario Winamp. laptop. <laughs> Winamp, do you remember, you know, ooh, what am I going to change my skin to? My skin, yeah. Mm-hmm. I liked the original skin because mm. I was a, you know, I was a purist. Mm. I sure. Liked, I like I like, I like purity. Uh, Praise is a s- banger. It's a I good song. I gotta say, uh, for me, s- not in the same vein of Fat Boy Slim, but sort of, yeah. um, Moby's Play, I believe, yeah. was, mm. what well, was released in October 2000, thousand i'm seeing yes. that. that can't be right yeah. but then there were some songs that were coming out this i can't be think right. i believe play came out in 1999 i don't know yes. what i'm looking at that just said 2000 at the end of 99 because i remember listening to it in all through like that was the cd i listened to the most when i first got to la so when i think of 1999 i think of that entire album because it's i know moby was a little weird with natalie portman <laughs> He's a tea guy now. You know, from- I met I, I ran into movies <laughs> several times when I was in New York City. Was he drinking and, tea? Yeah. Well, I worked right down the street from like basically where his tea shop was. Mm-hmm. But but the thing about Moby is <laughs> like you never know that it's him because he looks exactly like 
all the other dudes in New York in the early 2000s who look yeah. like Mook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the best you'll ever do is like, hey, that guy looks like kind of like Moby. But then you're like, oh, probably, w- oh, it was Moby. That was what Moby. A, I, yeah. Moby again. But he really did something for for bald men. And that's, you know, on that we can, that's good. There was I a love lot of, Play. Play is a great I, album. That, there is not a bad song on that. Album. No, but I definitely associate that with 2000. Like that is the two. It was released in May. I know. I know. I know. I know. Well, uh, when we get to May, we'll talk more about play yeah. again. I'm sure. But yeah, porcelain. That was definitely oh, the, the jam. The God, jam. The amount of times I've cried to that song. What a weird song for everybody to be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing. I it made me like, you know, sad and like a like a you know a good sad. I was like, the song yeah. is so happy, beautiful. Happy it was sad. Just, like, such a beautiful song. And guess rock what? In my dreams, I y'all. I am dying all the time. <laughs> right. It's accurate. It's accurate. It's how we experience. And then I wake up and I guess what, John, I'm going out of my mind. Let's just do the whole thing. <laughs> all right. January the 11th, the next day after The Sopranos, as though you haven't been like, whoa, TV's changed forever all of a sudden. Young John Stewart of the John Stewart Show yes. from MTV takes over from yes. Craig Kilborn. I was devastated. I was angry. Fucking, and I was devastated. yes. What the fuck? Who the who the fuck is this guy? Who's this mother? Who's this fucking Taking former over MTV Lord? Former MTV Craig Craig, Craig Kilborn was perfection. I mean, John Stewart turned yes. the Daily Show into In something else, Absolutely. and that's great. That's wonderful. Yep. yep. But Craig Kilborn. Yes. God, I loved him. I loved him so much. <laughs> And now everyone just thinks he looks like the singer from, oh gosh, who is it? Josh Holbe, the redheaded big what? redhead. What? Yeah. Are you just saying is things? It... What are you saying? What is Josh? It? Like, Josh something. Groban. No, Holbe. Not Holbe. Like, Holbe. Oh, people are screaming. Josh Holbe. <laughs> Josh Holmes. Sorry, Josh Holm from. What the fuck is Josh Holmes? <laughs> well, I'm gonna get there if you let All me. Right. He's in, he's right. the singer from Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, if that you fucking man. Look him up. He looks like. I'm gonna do that right now. Craig Kilborn. You have to look at him up, Josh young because he's he's Holmes. graying now. Home H O M M E. Oh, look H-O- up young Josh Holm when his hair was M-M-E. still red. Josh Holm, like like French. Oh yeah, no, I oh I fucking see it. Holy shit! They they could be brothers. They could be the same person. Mm-hmm. Alias Craig Kilborn. So anyway, Holy yeah, fucking god, yeah, it's weird. That it's is, freaky. That is that is nuts. Yeah, it's pretty freaky. But yeah. I was devastated. He was sarcastic. Uh, you we know. all were. Like people. Okay, so it's like impossible to explain to kids today of like what The Daily Show with John Stewart was for the culture for like. 10 years easy like which it was huge and and yeah. but it's also impossible to explain to people that, like no no no, we loved our little like snark our little snark master yes we did that's what made comedy central the cool yep. channel it, because we had i loved it basically loved weekend it. update mm-hmm. <laughs> for half an hour the whole time every night it was uh wonderful. yeah it was you know look i'll just say something perhaps really controversial john oliver could never he could never. Ooh. I would say wow. it was closer to last week tonight, the way that it was just snarky commentary on the. Basically. Yeah, but it. it John it's, Oliver's it, great, but he could never. Yeah, and I, and I know I, people who yeah. write on that show. <laughs> could never. Yeah, John Oliver's doing something unique. I mean, he's he doing is, he's doing like a lot but of like it important really to journalism. Did start <laughs> with Liz, like Liz Winstead. Liz Winstead, the yeah. Daily Show. Yeah, Craig Kilborn. Like, yeah. What if we just did? What if we just made fun of the news? Anchorman could never. Also, like, what if we just made fun of the news? Great. Yeah. It was in response was, to all those, like, all the Fox, all the talking heads that were coming up. Coming yeah. Out. Yeah. They're like, let's take it and make fun of it. That's well, it was yeah. It was it was making a mockery of the way that like news TM was done right at the time, and yeah. and 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 it had served its purpose. I mean, John Stewart did something that was, I think, you know, just like we can't, we'll never repeat what what they pulled off when yeah. when that when that really got going um but yeah i mean like the, the five questions was great like there's oh just some God. classic 
great comedy moments that came out of out of that out of that era and i do remember john stewart and like he really fucking bombed it for like he was really yes, bad everyone everyone so should awkward. remember that as everyone's crucifying every you know trevor noah got it obviously that was a very tough tough chair to fill if yeah. you will and yeah. now we're going through it again they they yep. wh- whiffed it with roy wood yep. jr really whiffed it big time hasan yep. minaj would have been great yep I don't know. I, I really liked full time. Was it full frontal with Samantha B? I'm yeah. like everyone keeps throwing out these names. I've not heard a single woman suggested to take over on the Daily Show. I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I keep hearing the same four men, and I'm like, I, I mean, look, I'm not Samantha B. Already had a show. Maybe she doesn't want to do it. But uh, that, that was an incredible show. She was great. She yeah. came from the Daily Show, right? So she did. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she and her husband were her both. Husband, um, yeah. Jordan yeah. Klepp. No, no, not Jordan no, Clever. The other one, Jason. Um, they Jason looking, they couldn't be more identical. These two men. <laughs> <laughs> to me. So they, to they, me. They, 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 they could. They could. They could. Just, you know, tall, I, uh, tall, white, funny men. I was sold on John Stewart when that same year in the spring. The faculty? He, did he get stabbed in the eye? <laughs> no, he uh, he came to my college. <laughs> oh, <laughs> where did. somebody stabbed him in the eye with a pen? He, he did stand up. Todd Todd Barry opened for him, and John Stewart was the main act. Todd and he Barry. was Man, they were both fucking so goddamn funny. Yeah. And then, uh, so I met him after the show. He signed a dollar bill for me because it's the only thing I had lying around. Do you still uh, have it? Uh, somewhere yeah oh, yeah John. he's actually signed two one dollar bills for me Find i went to the daily those. show a few years later and he signed a second dollar bill for me. <laughs> Find those yeah no they're they're somewhere in you my, should have gotten him to know, sign boxes, the same dollar bill boxes. but i was I, I i i you know i watched the john stewart show on mtv and whatever and i was, yeah. I was always kind of like yeah he's fine like i never he never really did it for me but then i saw his stand up and i'm like oh you're kind of you kind of rule yeah uh and i feel like he was a lot more in with his stand up he was much more in control i think early on in in the daily show he was trying to figure out how to make it its own thing and his own mm-hmm. thing and, and that transition was really rough like it was oh, it yeah. was not it was not a good start no it wasn't uh, but you know the rest as they say is history mm-hmm. and man between 2000 one in like 2010 oh man the cultural yeah. influence of the daily show with john stewart yes yeah. can't can't be overstated yeah. cannot cannot and then the next day january the 12th big day in music history because this so let's we'll talk about the more minor one now the release of sugar ray's 1459 listen another top <laughs> another top to bottom perfect yeah. album perfect album and no, no. also really good title 1459 I love it, is a it was right. really good title <laughs> what kind of mark mcgrath sort of like hey, found his way into nothing. all sorts of places weirdly yeah. he kind of made his way into weird little places. mark mcgrath he, yeah he just is like, he like hey, i'm gonna do e this news now correspondent or, or something like very random yes, like that it was e-news or like extra i think extra, it's extra probably extra because e is a little more elevated i think whichever I one trash mario lopez either is or isn't on i don't know i think it's extra because e is like it again like a extra. little more ev- elevated a little elevated now remember it, when it wasn't when it was just like we're trying to be entertainment weekly but all, or into tonight but like all day every day that's well uh, i'm hal sparks uh <laughs> yeah God, hal yeah sparks. hal sparks love hal sparks mm-hmm. mark mcgrath mark mcgrath uh, sure just a guy who's just like i'm gonna i don't care if you say no i'm still gonna do this job I'm he, just gonna, here's, <laughs> i mean people talk about the, i mean this was a handsome him. man he was this was this was this was the talk of the of the sugar ray town that's yeah. how handsome this is the Barbara album, Rath by the way. The, so Fly had come out on the mm-hmm. previous album, the, one of the most annoying songs of all time. Uh, really hate that song to my core. But then this is the album with um, Every Morning. Every Morning. And Someday. Halo and it's, hanging it's from good. your four post it's bed. Pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Sunday and is a beautiful song. Legitimately a beautiful song. It is. It crazy. is. I feel yeah. crazy right now. <laughs> But it is like Sugar Ray is kind of the ultimate late '90s band, and that they named their album like "We're Almost Done." Our 15 minutes are Guys, almost over. Thank you. One more second. Night. Thank you. One and more good minute. Night. Thank Whatever you. it is. Thank I you know how to count night. time. Mm-hmm. 
so that's that's a very like a, I I so I was I was thinking along with like praise you that I you know I feel like every morning or someday mm. uh, close they're close to the song that like dump and like we're gonna talk about All Star later on of course but like they're up there but praise you man <laughs> that's that's yep. the one that just like. Woof, on loop all the way through the year yeah, all the time you said you yeah. have a mark mcgrath story no i don't i my mark mcgrath story was that you have two of them oh okay i thought you said you also you had a mark mcgrath me, story no what you said was <laughs> i thought you said you also have one and i said oh that's no, great what you said was mm-hmm. i have two encounters with mark mcgrath and i said so between the two of us we, we have, have two, two. <laughs> okay <laughs> one is like they're not that great i don't think i, I one was when i was living in la i can't remember the year but it was like peak Mark McGrath and I had just gone running and I stopped into a CVS because it was my lady time and I needed tampons. So naturally I get in line, I'm sweating, I'm disgusting, I'm holding tampons and who gets in line behind me? Moby. Oh, Mark McGrath. I wish. I wish it was Was Moby. Was he also buying tampons? No. I just turned around and I went, ah, no. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) Not like this. Swerve cool. Not like this. It wasn't my period because I'm not embarrassed about that. But I was You're just like, like, I just want to fly. Oh, now. After this CVS. I mean, my Mark. face was so red. I was so sweaty. Yeah. I was just like, I I'm know. A, you know, I didn't. Yeah. I just I said it out loud before I could. And then I just, I, you know, I scuttled on my way. Like, I was like, got to yeah. get out of here. And then the next one, years later, this is weird. This was a weird story. So this this years and years later, they were doing one of those like, oh, weird. Mark uh, Sugar Ray's playing uh, like re- not a like a reunion tour, but this was long after they were popular. I'm going to say this was 2010s or something like that after that. And I was like, oh, Mark McGrath, is, their band is playing at this like venue in Baltimore. And so I went by myself and I'm watching the show diligently from the front row. Like mm-hmm. and I noticed one of their tech guys, I know him. He's a social media friend. And I was like, I he sees me and I were waving to each other. So he gets me backstage <laughs> after the show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is, mm-hmm. And I got to hang out with them for a while. And this is embarrassing. And I get my <laughs> So embarrassed. My purse is listening. I st- nearly stole. I didn't do it. Mark McGrath had taken off his shirt. What, what was possessing me? And it was so sweaty. And I thought, yeah, I, I'm yeah. going to take that shirt. I'm going to take yes. that shirt. I, tr- yeah, I mean, I almost shirt. did. And then I was like, you know what? what don't be weird. Um, and that was it. Those were my two encounters. I mean, the fact do that I was still ready have the to. Shirt? I didn't take it. I, oh, I, you didn't take it? No, I didn't. I thought to myself, I, I, I was like, oh. I'm going to take this shirt. But why was I doing that? Mark McGrath is certainly not know, a person. I, like I'm saying, he's attractive. Dollar. Yeah, but yeah. I wasn't like I wasn't like ooh Mark McGrath. That wasn't who I thought. Like, I recognized <laughs> that that was an attractive man. But yes, so yeah, yeah Mark McGrath. He's morning. like a permanent eight and a half. You but, know? Yeah, I don't know where yeah. he is now, and maybe he doesn't know where he is now. I was just I was just watching a documentary series that he was uh, he was narrating. Was it like I love the '90s or one of those? It kind of was. (laughs) It's called The Dark Side of the '90s, and he wait is is it on Hulu? Because I started to watch that one too. Okay, yeah, that's him. That's him narrating it. I uh, there in Seattle. There in uh, there's a probably still is. I don't know. There was slash is an alternate alternative rock station called 107.7 the end and it's called the end because it's the last station on the dial that's clever they used to do these fun things in the 90s where they would like interview somebody on the show on the radio and then if that person left something behind they would like auction it off to the 12th caller (laughs) okay (laughs) so like (laughs) so two of the ones i remember were uh, Tori Amos's like mascara smudged towel, and oh, um, Jesus. which I really fucking man, I would have loved to win that. Uh, but the other one was uh, Dickie Barrett's quarter. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> They're like twelfth caller wins Dickie Barrett's quarter that he left behind on the table. Before yeah, you he have to it. come to the station so you can pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> 
That was exciting for me. That was uh, exciting for me. I, also, I just want you to know that Mark McGrath will be 56 this year. That sounds right. I just want that. I just want to say that it. Right. I just want to say that those right. words. Okay. 56. Lastly, okay. on my list, mm. the very same day. Jesus. The release of the Britney Spears debut album, oh, Baby One More Time, Baby One More January Time, January the 12th. <sighs> It's bittersweet now. It is. It is. Oh, no. I never listened. Never heard it. Never listened. Was never a Britney Spears fan, not for any reason. It just wasn't yeah. my style. Now, I I was someone who like I I had pretty good taste in music even as a child, but then at 10 and 11 I also liked New Kids on the Block. So I wasn't a someone who was yeah. against, you know, manufactured pop music because i also they were from boston i was from boston yeah you know, i also liked yeah. the backstreet boys over in that level so uh, i look, liked look, some of pop i music. want it that way one of the greatest pop songs of all time larger than life couldn't be more fun sure the music video i believe that's the one where they're like recreating like the universal monsters or is that everybody I that think that's everybody. Right. No, everybody. Oh, everybody is when they're doing like the dancing werewolves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's super yeah. fun. And they're great. But yeah. I missed the Britney Spears train, missed the Jessica Simpson, missed the Aguilera train. I missed I missed yeah. all of those, even though I'm more or less the same age as Britney Spears. This wasn't I didn't get it. I will say that uh, hit me baby one more time. And I want it that way. Two of the greatest pop songs of all time. I mean, like just f- like phenomenal pop music. Like, yeah. just awesome, 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 awesome. Um, I love. I mean, Baby One More Time is such a great song, and I used to do that at karaoke sometimes because you know, yeah, the, it's a fucking banger. I, I like the song, song, but I don't yeah. have any memory of hearing it as it was coming out, like as it was I, happening. I don't. Mm, I don't remember, remember like I don't remember like anticipate like because so the song came out I think in September of ninety eight. This was back in the day when, like, that was how things worked. Like, they, they they would they would release a single, and then you'd wait for the album to come out. And I don't think they do that anymore, but well, maybe now, they do, and I'm just old. What's, here's what's strange. I thought we were all led to believe that Britney Spears was, like, 16 when all this was happening. But she is literally a year younger than me. Yeah. And I was 19 so, when this came out. So did she actually record this when she was, like, 18? Because everyone was like, she was so young. And I'm saying, I'm not saying 18 is not young, but there's 18 and 16 are quite different. Was she? Everyone's like, she's only 15. I, I'm a little confused about the timeline. But she was born in December 1981. So towards the end, which, you know, okay. I was that born in February uh, 1980. So I'm almost a full. So January 99, she's 18, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, did, so, she, that, so, so did the yeah. video come two years after? Did, I mean, again, I thought she was like 15 or 16 when she made the video, but yeah, no, well, she must have been 17 then because because yeah. the video came out in September. Maybe she recorded it when she was 15. I'm not disputing. I don't think so. I don't think she I think she was just 17, but like 17. Do fucking you young. also like, remember just being told she was so young? She was like 15, 16. Again, 17, 18, mm, still young. Yes. But 15 and 16 is like you're a BBBBB. Bee, 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 bee. I think 17, like young to be highly sexualized in the way that she was, especially in the that night. was her choice, that outfit. I listened to her um audiobook and I believe she wanted that outfit. So but she like, wanted it that is it? No, she had like no. that little bit of all time. Yeah, look, teenage girls want to get those get sassy sometimes like that. I like, know. That's just I know. But do they really got. realize that like when you're making that choice, you're like also broadcasting it to like the Are you saying she was asking for it? No, I'm saying that perhaps that she was like not especially well directed, which I think or like well, there you know overseen by responsible mm-hmm. adults maybe you know, but which, which, i still think, I think that was... like that was a perfectly fine and cute little outfit for like a cute little 17 year old to wear or whatever that that's not yeah it. i think what I, happened I just... obviously later was like right ter- not even just with her dad just in general but like ju- like timberlake and all that jazz but i'm kind of saying this in <laughs> retrospect like that that you know it seems like she was manipulated by some pretty fucked up people and uh yeah mm-hmm. mostly her parents i think from yes. the, the way the audiobook was presented. But I, if, I might be misremembering, but I do think that she was like, it was her idea to have the video in like a school and have it be like that. But maybe I'm wrong. What I, are, I, what are like, what are like the years of Britney? I mean, like, 
I feel like it was in my mind. She started in the mid nineties, but I'm d- upon no. discovering this, like I know that's what I'm saying. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, I guess through the mid two thousands, when did she, when did the, I mean, she was, if she was under the conservatorship for, for did they say 13 years and she just kind of got out. Was that 2010? Yeah. Well, I guess the, the Madonna kiss was like, Oh three. Right. With, with, Christina? On, on the MTV. No, where she kissed Madonna on she, the MTV well, movie, uh, Music right. Awards. Well, I know right, that Madonna and, and Christina also kissed, but that didn't make it to air. Well, I'm you just know. Just saying, that didn't make you it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but then I also feel that like the, the, the tabloid kind of, you know, shaved head thing was like around 08 right so like it was that. it was like within so it was, it was definitely like when the in, when Perez Hilton was a thing so it had to have been when when yeah the, the internet was doing all that because he was had been torturing her for a, a yeah. while at that point yeah but I I, I, also, I I mean I feel like that song and that album also gave birth to the kind of we're going back to the bubblegum pop sort of teen pop uh thing for for the next decade and it was like this is when the dominance yeah, but i of... feel like did the where's the backstreet boys like 98 no they're around the same time i mean maybe they were like 98 but i feel like once britney hit that was sort of like the oh my god the backstreet boys were formed in 1993 yeah, no, they were around for a long time, but they didn't start having hits until like 97, 98. Well, their debut right? album was 96. Right. So right. they were, they so boy bands had been, had started like, they had started knocking out, I guess, right. gr- grunge and and hip hop at, at Big and Incredible was really doing well. But this was starting to push out grunge for, yes, bubblegum, pop, yeah. pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and, and that wasn't for me. <laughs> And that's okay. No, I'm a but cool it is girl. kind of now. I, I I kind of go back and I I kind of appreciate oh, I lo- it now. Like I said, I like the Backstreet Boys. I even saw them in yep. concert, and I remember thinking, "Well, I remember thinking, I, I think I was twenty. I just remember thinking, oh, is this weird?'" And I was like, "No, I I'm their age. It's weird that twelve <laughs> year olds are here. That's fucking weird. I'm the like Nick Carter and I are the same. I'm mean, actually talking about that. I think Nick Carter's had some issues, but like, yeah." I'm Wait. I'm the same age or older than the Backstreet Boys. They're older, rather. So, Wait, now, Nick's alive. Now Aaron Carter's dead. Now who's dumb? Yeah, but I think okay. Nick Carter also had some weird like legal issues. Oh yeah, yeah, him. yeah. No, the whole family is has had some. Has not had doing some great. Issues. Their sister just died. Not doing great. Oh god. Um, yeah. Not doing great so over bad. there. I can tell yeah. you, in sync. Uh, not to brag, but the next town over from me, JC Chasses, is from that town. So is it Chasse or Chasses? I don't know, and I don't. Okay, you don't know. so you don't you don't know him. <laughs> I, I don't like, know him. I, think, I just know that I think he's the authority. From the... If you no, yeah. I, I don't know this is one of those things where you're like, this feels like an urban legend, but the internet is telling me that he's from <laughs> Bowie, Maryland. But but I actually interviewed Joey Fatone last year for work, I love and I brought I love it up. Yeah, and I was like, JC Shaw says is from the next town over from me, and he goes Bowie, Maryland, and I went Joey. Yeah. You know, he's dead and correct. And I said, Joey, <laughs> thank you. He is from Bowie, Maryland. You're correct. Yeah. Yeah. God. There you anyway. go. I like JC. I think he's my favorite of the, of the, of he the had album. a really sassy song. Like he did a single, he had a so- brief solo career. And I think he had like a pretty sassy song. Was Crick, was Chris Kirkpatrick an NSYNC or a Backstreet Boys? He was in sync. He was an NSYNC. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was the like, weirdo one with the goggles right like that yeah that guy. and he had yeah. like braids yeah. right you gotta have a weirdo guy you gotta have your 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 joey mcintyre joey mcintyre was, the, was the cutest one fashion choices joey yeah. mac was the cutest one he was my but he was also the weird one who like cut the thing out of his ha- hat and, i know, you know but that was that a very like late 80s early 90s <laughs> vibe <laughs> was a thing i know i know no i i think that like so if we think about like grunge existed before 1991 right but it was it was when mtv played smells like teen spirit Mm -hmm. on air Mm -hmm. that like that's when the whole that's when the when like there was no turning back that was when things were born to me it was like when Britney Spears' Baby One More Time came out that it just yeah. consumed everything. And you were like, nope, oh, we're living in the Backstreet Boys world now. Like, this is this is just how it's going to be for, yeah, for, for, for a few years. Until the 
at least 2000 because yeah. I think it was the yeah. 2000 MTV Video Music Awards where Britney and Justin wore the denim outfits. I think that was the 2000 awards. I keep forgetting that that was ever a thing, Britney and Justin. Like, well, that if never... you listen, if you listen to her memoir or reader memoir, you'll hear a pretty insane oh. story uh-huh. about when she. Got, I think I can say it now. It's, I think it's pretty. It's but people talked about. It. She had an abortion, and at one point, some people took this what he did as something nice. I took it as something so self-involved and narcissistic. At one point, he was like, "She's like lying on the bathroom floor, not doing well," and he goes and gets his guitar and serenades her. I would have been like, "You need, you, we, you need to shut up right now." Yeah. I mean, I'm I know Justin Trim, whatever. If I'd be like, well, "This isn't a concert." <laughs> I'm having an abortion. <laughs> the the fans are literally leaving doing, right now. Doing abortion. We're not doing concert. That's the, a different time. The fans yeah. are leaving as we speak. So wink, yeah. wink, 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 wink. <laughs> I get it. Get out. Get, get out with your guitar. Oh my god, I would yeah. have lost my mind. Yeah. I mean, that's the least of this. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You gotta read that. So is that? I'll just have you tell me more about it as, as I will. time goes on. Baby, yeah. baby. Um, yeah, was that? Did we do it? Did we do the first two weeks of January? We did. Canada? We are through the first two weeks of January, and and again, the the seeds have been laid for for the monumental year that ninety nine will become. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the the big moments, the Sopranos, I think, is the biggest of of those. Uh, for 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 the future but yeah the movies haven't started yet where we are we are we're going to mention a big one in the next episode um and it's also a movie that is going to show up in our next round so that's going to be that's going to be cool but yeah we just got some like weird foreign movies varsity blues and uh your favorite movie of all time at first sight with i mean and mirrors (laughs) (laughs) i love a movie I love a movie where there's so many movies where a blind person can see again. They're usually horror movies. There's yeah. a Jessica Alba one that I'm thinking of, but there's this, it's better. This a, it's better. This one's a love story. Everybody. It's better than the movie where uh, uh, Mini Driver gets uh-huh. David Duchovny's dead wife's heart and they fall. In love. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, I know that a one real as movie well. that exists. Yeah, and that I, I have seen. I, I'm familiar mm-hmm. with that one as well. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's better. That's better. Yep. that's correct. Yeah. Not a great premise. That's fucking weird. <clears throat> Whoever thought of that? But God bless you, Duchovny, for taking the job. And uh, Mini Driver. I don't, I don't know who's his dead wife. Is it like? I feel like it's. Um, I don't remember. One of the, I think it's one of the, it's Joe, no, Natasha Richardson? Maybe. Does that sound right? I don't know. I could look it up. I have the internet, but I'm not gonna. We'll find out next time when we return for our second episode of This Was Your Life. In, this in was I, your quarter no, life crisis. This, this was your quarter life crisis. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll be back next week with a movie to discuss about. Um, hands that are idle and mm-hmm. uh, etc so if you can pick up what it is from that clue then you <laughs> are a smart smart person cool all right see you next time Bye.